but uh, it's a real it's a real honor to be here. So um, one thing about this this lecture is I do want it to be interactive. This is something where I want to communicate with you guys openly because uh, that's one of my favorite ways. What's up? I was just checking the, that oh, that it worked. Okay, cool, perfect. Um, so today I want to talk quite a bit about camera uh, because I I think I might have some insight that could be helpful to you guys. So, but first question for you all. Uh, how many of you are intimidated by cameras? Show of hands. Fantastic. All right, good. So this lecture is especially for you, but it's for everybody, all right? Because I want to remove fear of this piece of equipment. Um, it's, uh, and I, and I, have, I have kind of an interesting method, and, and uh, I want you to have a different sort of relationship with it. Um, so... I'm going to ask you a question and I want to hear your guys' answers and we're just going to kind of unfold this. Um, for the people in my class who I've already kind of chatted a little bit about this subject, please don't give away my answers. <laughs> um, I, want to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to just have a discussion. So, it's a fairly simple question. What is a camera? It's a box with a lens on it. It is. Yes, it is. It's a box with a lens on it. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm gonna write these down a little bit. I'm gonna do a little back and forth probably because I like whiteboards as people in my class know. So it's a box with a lens. It records light. It records light. Yes, these are both absolutely true. Records light, box with the lens, fantastic, keep going. It has settings. It does have settings. Yep. Oh, this is good. Okay. Whew. I did this. I did this. I did a version of this lecture, and somebody completely cut the legs off my lecture. I was like, oh dang, I was not prepared. What is a camera, guys? Is this it? Did we cover it? A box with a lens records light and has settings. Does that sum up what a camera is? Yeah. It's a tool for capturing. A tool for capturing performance? I like that one. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> what else? Did we get to the bottom of it yet? It's a nice whiteboard. Wow. Hey, thanks, Joey. Is there any, what, what else is it? Yeah. A third, whoa! A third eye? Why a third eye? <laughs> because you have two. Okay, I like. I literally like that answer. Uh, could be a fourth. Man. Could be a fourth. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I, I really like that. I haven't haven't heard that before. A third eye. I'm gonna just simplify it a little bit. Would you guys agree that a camera, I mean, a camera represents an eye. Would you guys agree? Yes. Why? It captures visuals over a certain period of time. Yes, it does, absolutely. I would agree, it's absolutely modeled after an eye, but okay, tough, maybe a slightly more difficult question. What is an eye? It's a camera. <laughs> no, no, no circular, no circular arguments here. I'm afraid it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cut it. Yeah. Well, specifically, it represents one eye because the one eye can only. You're see right. It. Unless you're James Cameron, and then you have the two. And, yeah. 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 And then 3D, and then we all have to sit through those movies again. And, yep. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, what is an eye? Yeah. An eye uh, turns uh, visual information like you know. Whoa! 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 Hold on. What'd you say? It turns the information the eye does? Or it is something else? So it captures the light and then it sends that information into Into what? The brain. Whoa! Whoop. The image is processed here. Right? Did you guys know that the eye is literally an extension of the brain? There's no such thing as an image without a brain. There's no such thing. It's 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 like a made up concept. It it only exists like really in our in our brains, right? Otherwise, it's just a bunch of matter and whatnot. We have to interpret it in order for it to even have meaning or exist, right? 
And without it, like eyes actually grow out of our brain. They're, they're literally an extension of the central nervous system, at least the, the back part that translates all the light and all that sort of stuff, which is the equivalent of the sensor or the film, right? You guys agree? Yeah. So you guys have heard this quote before. Does this have any meaning to you guys? No? Is this just a fun quote or does it, does it feel like it has power to how you might use a camera? Yes. It does. <laughs> Why? Um, because, because it's how you perceive the world. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, look, I have an argument here. This is my this is my argument, all right? This is this is subjective in many regards. I'm not a scientist or whatever. I can't I can't put this definition in a dictionary or anything like that, right? But it's a perspective I want to offer because I think it might help you in how you choose to have a relationship with your camera. All right? My argument is that a camera is in fact the soul. If the soul exists, I believe it exists in your brain, and a camera is a brain. It's a perspective, but who's Soul is it? Yeah, absolutely, right? Which means that you have the opportunity to take your audience somewhere and do something with them, right? Right? Look, what I want to dispel in your guys' hearts is this idea that a camera is a big hunk of equipment that is in fact like between you and the vision, right? Because a lot of you are good writers. I think that's one of the biggest reasons the grad program brings in people from so many different walks of life, right? A lot of you don't have a tremendous amount of experience, but you do have a, or a, a filmmaking experience necessarily, but a lot of you do have great storytelling instincts, right? And I want to take the camera and make it your best and favorite companion in expressing yourself. Does that make sense? But by doing that, I want you to see the camera differently and, and take it away from this, from this technical uh, block between you, all right? Um, so this is where it gets a little bit interactive. Um, now that we have this idea, if you accept my proposition that a camera is a soul, so how does that change what you do with it, right? So we're going to do a little exercise. Can everybody please stand up? All right, who's the shortest person here? Who's the shortest person in here? Yeah. How, how tall are you? Yeah. Five foot one. And who's the tallest person in here? You look pretty tall. How tall are you? Six two. Fantastic. I mean, this, this is a good little collection group, right? Um, fantastic. Now that you're up here, I'm going to introduce an interesting concept. <laughs> okay, so look, would you guys agree that the world is designed for people to be standing for the vast majority of their existence? Like 99, like 90 to 99 percent of your life is either walking around standing like this or sitting in very, very specific spaces. Would you guys agree? Well, when you're awake, <laughs> when you're when you're actually conscious, right? So the world is constructed to be viewed from this vantage point or specifically when you're sitting, right? So we're going to step a little bit outside of this realm. Can everybody please lay down on the floor? <laughs> everybody just and, and lay down in the clutter. Don't don't go to some don't go to some like some open area. I want you to lay down like next to all the garbage and all the all the fuss. <laughs> All right. So just just lay down and and and, and just ex I want you all to I want you all to Everybody just look around. All right, can I have can I have quiet on set please? Thank you. Sorry. I am also an AD sometimes. Um so please just look around you, all right? And take like 20 30 seconds in silence and just explore things. Make eye contact with somebody. Just look around and see if you're noticing things 
I assume none of you have been on the floor in this room before. No. And if you have, don't tell me why. <laughs> All right? But look around for 20 seconds in silence and just soak it in. All right? Funny, a lot of you are giggling. That's interesting. You weren't you weren't giggling standing up, but you were giggling lying on the floor. What are you guys noticing? I want to hear some examples. Are you guys? What are you guys experiencing? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys experiencing? Discomfort. Discomfort. Good. I mean, are you guys are you guys noticing anything about this room? Are you learning anything about this space that you have not learned? As a result of standing? What's up? Um, a new perspective. Yes. But like, what are you seeing? From this angle, the chairs look pretty cool. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Uh, like, the bottom of the seat is actually like, there's like... A bunch of holes? Yeah. Yeah, is it tripping anybody's <laughs> trypophobia? No? I hope not, because that's... I have trypophobia. It's awful. All right, so how many of you are having a nostalgic experience of some kind? Anybody? Definitely. Describe it. Whoa, hang on. So that's interesting. So you lie down on the floor and suddenly some of you are having a nostalgic experience of being a child. Why? Because I was always on the floor. Because you took because you were always on the floor. Well, because you took you took your cameras, you put it on the ground, and suddenly things are harkening back. How many of you feel a, a, a nostalgic experience back to kindergarten nap time? Yeah. <laughs> Right? And that happened because you took your soul and you put it in that perspective. And you guys have the opportunity with your cameras, wherever you put it, to evoke an experience depending on where you put it. There's a reason why if you put a camera low on somebody who's powerful and look up at them that they feel more powerful because they're so much bigger than you in that perspective. Right? That doesn't mean that it always means that, but it's not just a funny camera trick. Right? When you think of a camera as a soul, Stuff like this magically happens, right? All right, everybody, please uh, have a seat. Oh, no, you want to get up? All right, so I have a question, guys. Why did, I, why did I call that standing and sitting position the dead zone? Why do I call it that? All right, so it's a subjective term, and it's, it's strong language to call it the dead zone, but why would I call it that? No movement. Uh, there's no movement. That's really interesting. Um, I like that, but that's not what I'm getting at exactly. It yes. Well, it, and it's there's nothing wrong necessarily with being in the dead zone, but I want to caution you guys from defaulting there. Does that make sense? I mean, it's interesting. You have the opportunity with thinking of a camera differently to take them on a journey. And it doesn't, like laying down on the floor, for example, I mean, it's a silly exercise and it's fun, right? But the thing is like, you don't need a lot of money or anything like that to put your audience in a unique perspective that they're gonna find interesting and it's gonna evoke something. But the thing is, is that perspective, if, if you do choose to go into the dead zone, my, my opinion is to tread carefully. It's like a warning sign. And it's usually very, very often the first place we go, and I wanna, I wanna caution you guys away from default decisions because the camera is that much more powerful than we often give it the credit for. Does that make sense? And it's easy to take a camera and put it in other places, put it close to something. So everybody, um, find an, the most interesting looking item you have in your possession, just anything. It doesn't, doesn't, just find something that you can hold in your hand that has detail or anything. Just everybody find one, I'll give you 10 seconds. All right? And just hold it out uh, in front of you, put it on like the table in front of you. All right. So look at it from look at it from your from your seat. All right, and just just get it just kind of observe it a little bit. All right, and now I want you to take your face, and I want you to put it as close to that thing while keeping it in focus. I don't want you to lose focus, and just study the details. Get as close as you can without losing focus on it. 
With your eyes, yes. <laughs> Can we turn the lights on so they have more light to see? We want to get those cones working. All right? And just study it. What are you guys doing with your eyes right now? Pulling focus. Pulling focus. <laughs> Pulling focus, yes. Yeah. But no. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Thank you for asking. No, this is a close-up. It's a close-up of an item. And the proximity, I mean, how much bigger is this in your field of view? And how much more imposing are these items that you're staring at? I mean, I, I wanted to do this exercise where everybody finds a partner and then gets really close with their faces, but that's like probably some violation. Because <laughs> it would be, but like, how many of you are scared of that idea? How many of you are kind of frightened of the idea of like, oh, find somebody next to you and like get your face as close as possible to theirs? How, is that intimidating? Wow, does that give you some perspective on what a close up is? Right? Does that make sense? Okay, so I need some volunteers. I need two volunteers. You in the back? Uh, yeah, you. Come on up. Can we have a round of applause for our volunteers? Kevin loves the stage. Yeah, I know. Can't get enough. Kevin and <laughs> Kevin and Jennifer. Jennifer, come on up. All right, have a seat. <laughs> Jennifer and Kevin. All right, fantastic. Are you guys, you guys, you guys are comfortable being on stage, it yeah. seems. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so you guys are going to be our guinea pigs and you guys are going to share your experiences with us. I need honest answers, okay? Okay, fantastic. So first exercise, I want you to look at each other for 10 seconds and just stay still, please. Just look at each other for 10 seconds. I'm gonna change some lungs. <laughs> You're gonna change your what? Lungs. Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Great work. Excellent job. Well done. All right. How was this experience? Was this intense? Or was this, what was it like? Not exactly. It's too wide. It's too wide. I wanna yeah. bring it tighter. Got it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, you are a director, I can tell. <laughs> Fantastic. So, what was your experience? It was good. I mean, it was. It, I was a little nervous at first. A little nervous at first. Yeah. yeah. And then, I, then I got comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Apologize for my beauty. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So I'm gonna change something. Cool. Wait, wait. Stay there. Okay. <laughs> something key. Do you mind if I grab your chair? Okay, everybody watch, this is very important. You ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that different? Yeah. Was that different? Mm -hmm. How different? Describe it. The zoom in just gave me more to was it a zoom in or something else? Oh no, Dolly. Yes. <laughs> and how different was it? It's different. It, it just dragged me into his world. Yes. Yeah. Right? Was it more intense for you? Yeah. It it's kind of radical, yeah, isn't it? Cool. Whoa. Are you guys seeing what I'm where I'm going with this? It's a little mysterious what I'm doing with this, I think, right? No, it's a camera move. All right? We're going to do something a little bit different. So you're the camera stand up, please. Walk over this way, please. All right, so you're just gonna walk forward. I'm gonna walk. You're gonna walk forward, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, and I'm just gonna follow. Okay, okay. okay. Cool. and then you're gonna stop right around there in front, of, in front of this gentleman. Okay. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. What was that like? Was that interesting? Versus, I mean, what is, what would that, have, how, how different would that have been if he just walked straight forward, or if you just walked, if you just watched him walk from back there? It's, it's so different. I feel like I'm in the scene. Yes, right? See, it's interesting. When you, when you do a camera move, the opportunities are just like, they, they, it feels different when you start to consider what the camera is. Does this make sense? Right? And the opportunities that, that is afoot, right? That's not a crazy radical move, but it has drastically different meaning than watching it from a pan on a, do on a tripod or watching it as them just walking towards you on a tripod. Does that make sense? Great work, guys. Thank you very much.
So who is the camera? The camera is the audience. So um, look, my philosophies about filmmaking and film teaching is pretty simple. My philosophy is just listen to the master filmmakers and study what they're doing and learn from them by paying really close attention. So we're going to watch some examples of some camera movement. Does that sound good? See the dolly? Okay. One second. Give me dim lights, please. How many of you have seen Midsummer or Midsummer? How do you pronounce it? Does anybody know? Midsummer. All right, let's take a look here. All right, can we hit the lights all the way up, please? Sorry, it made me juggle. All right, so we're just going to watch this and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. What is it that makes them hot? We'd like to grab all the best bait from other countries and drag them over. Christian, you can do your thesis on that. How long is the drive? About four hours. Oh my god. Interesting shot. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the movie? Oh, it's Yes. It's like a portal that takes you into a different universe. Yeah. And how did they communicate it? It's like this is a thing. Yeah. But how many of you got like a serious sense of vertigo? from watching this. When I watched this in the theater, I was like, whoa, I was like, calm down, right? But it's interesting, because like, is this, a, is this a crazy camera move? Or is it actually kind of simple? It's kind of simple, right? But it, 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 I think, I think, it, I think it, it uh, embellishes this philosophy I'm trying to talk about a little bit. It literally flipped you upside down and it gave you story meaning. Would you agree? Is this relevant to the story? I mean, well, here's a question, though. How did they figure out this shot? How many of you remember this shot hyper clearly before I even re-showed it to you? Everybody who's seen Midsummer, you all remember this shot, right? So, like, how did they come up with it? Like, did they read a book? Or did they watch another movie? Did they steal this? Or was this the first time you've seen this? Yeah? I like to think it was, like, a moment in the script or the story that and they, and they what? And they thought of or devised a camera movement that articulated what they wanted the story to say in that yeah. moment. So they made it up? Hopefully. Yeah. Well, no, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to get at, right? It, but the thing is, is I don't think they were sitting there going like, we, the audience is a camera and let's do something funny. But the thing is, is, when the audience is a camera and you think about that, I want it and I hope that it unlocks for you the ride you can take your audience on. 
Does that make sense, guys? It's like, oh, what if we flipped, like, and, and you know, it's like when you, when you think of like a, a drone shot, you know, I don't want you to see this little buzzing thing. Oh, whoops. This little buzzing thing in the air, right? It's like, no, there's a person up there who's having an experience. What if we flipped them upside down, <laughs> right? It's like, what effect, what effect might that have narratively on our, on our story and on our characters, right? Hopefully, it can help you make stuff up and do cool things with your audience. And camera moving is a really great way of doing that. Does that make sense? All right, so how many of you have seen The People vs. O.J. Simpson? Did you like it? Was it? You didn't like it? Oh, well, how come? I say first for Brian Murphy personally, but not for everyone. Well, I mean, so, um, do you guys remember how it was shot? Very aggressively. It was shot very aggressively? Yeah. How, what, what else do other people remember about how it was shot? Who, who else saw it? I saw it, I can't really remember. You can't really remember. Was it intense, though? Like, was it, or was it, was it fairly tame? Like, what was your experience watching it? I mean, it was an intense experience, for sure. Yeah, I guess it was shot. Well, no, here's a question. Like, how, who, uh, not you, because you didn't like it. <laughs> What's up? I saw it. How was it shot? Do you remember? No, but I, did, I think that tells you something. Maybe. It tells you something? Well, how would you normally shoot a courtroom drama? What? Pretty standard coverage, I guess. You think you, just standard coverage? Yeah. I mean, like, I think most people would, it's like, it's a, it's a drama. I mean, it's a drama. You know, they're, they're, they're sitting there and they're all making their arguments and I just want to make sure everybody gets their coverage, right? So, I mean, how, how do you think they shot it? <laughs> Let's watch it. Let's watch it. If I can find it. Here we go. Sorry, this was the highest quality video I could get without, uh, like, downloading illegally the whole movie. Or the whole, the whole show, excuse me. Alright, here we go, let's just watch this clip. At the outset. Let me say that not one bit of domestic violence is tolerable. O.J. Simpson? is not proud of some of the things that happened during his marriage. Does that add up to murder? No. Mr. Darden talked about 1985, but he missed the whole point. Something interesting happened in 1985. Mark Furman responded to a call on Rocky. He saw a white woman Married to a powerful black man. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. Because he's a hardened racist. Mark Furman is the one who said, if I see an interracial couple, I'm going to stop them. If I don't have a reason, I'm going to make something up. So you have a lying Mark Furman. The personification of evil who found the gloves. But don't be fooled. This isn't just one officer. Mark Furman represents the entire LAPD. Now, you may not know this, but you are empowered. Your decision has a major implication both in this courtroom and outside of it. Things happen for a reason in life. Maybe that's why we're gathered together. Something in your background, your character, helps you to know that this is wrong. Maybe you're the right people at the right time to be able to say, no more. We can't have this. What they have done is disgraceful. O.J. Simpson is entitled to an acquittal. They have entrusted this case to a man who says he'd like to see all gathered together and killed. That is genocide. That man speaks like Adolf Hitler. Now, since you can't trust the man and you don't trust the people, is it any wonder? In the defining moment in this trial, when they asked 
O.J. Simpson to try on the glove, and the glove didn't fit. It didn't fit because it wasn't his. If you don't stop this cover-up, who will? Send them a message. Let them know that your verdict will travel far outside these walls. Ladies and gentlemen, remember these words. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Second. Man, that is so bright. Okay. Um, hang on, you're good. Overused for beginning filmmakers, personally. Uh, that's that's just my opinion. But um, so I, I want to encourage you guys to take radical, you know, to try to try moving the camera, try doing stuff. I think I think I think it's a uh, world of wonder of opportunities that I think is is often not applied. But let's chat a little bit also about still camera and how powerful it is because I have I have a philosophy I'd like to offer about um, how powerful still camera really is. Um, how many of you were at Sundance two years ago? Anybody? Do you remember the touch of the master's hand? Was it two years ago, or was that last year? I can't remember. Um, I'm going to show you guys a clip from um, the Sundance short that won the grand jury prize um, from Sundance. And I can't remember which year, but it was in the last two years, I think. So only one of you has seen the touch of the master's hand? So I'm not gonna show the whole thing, so you guys can watch the rest of it at some point. Um, famously, or not super famously, he's not that famous yet, but the director said when he finished making this movie and won all these accolades and everything, he goes, all you need to make a really great movie is a tripod and a camera. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, let's, let's see how we did it. Hola, Presidente. ¿Cómo está su diente? Oh, it's nada. ¿Cómo va la área? Bien. ¿Y el compañero? Bien. A quick context. This is a film about Mormons on their mission in a foreign country, and um, he's, he has to speak with his elder to get a, to offer updates on how his mission is going. Just Just to give some context, excuse me. Es obediente. Sí. ¿Tiene un testimonio de José Smith? Sí. ¿Vive en los convenios? Sí, claro. ¿Vive la ley de castidad? Sí. ¿Es honesto con sus semejantes? Sí. Bueno. Un abrazo, Elder. <laughs> es un buen Elder. Recuérdense, la barra está elevada y el campo blanco está ya para la ciega. Alarga el paso. Gracias por toda su bondad. Presidente. Algo más. Dígame. A 
I'm having a hard time with my... Por favor, elder. La lengua de sumisión. Yo tengo un problema de masturbación. Masturbación. Sí, me masturbo. ¿Cuántas veces la semana se masturba? Cuatro, más o menos. ¿Cuál parte del día se masturba? En la madrugada. ¿Dónde se masturba? En el baño, mayormente. ¿Está masturbando en el cuarto de compañerismo? Nunca, en el baño solamente. ¿Por cuánto tiempo ha luchado con el abuso personal? Mi vida entera. Está mirando pornografía. No lo sé. No sabe. Antes de ser llamado a la obra, yo era doctor. Nuestros cuerpos son fábricas pequeñas, son designadas a producir la vida. De vez en cuando se produce en exceso. El Señor nos ayuda a descargar el exceso. Ocurre sin ayuda, sin resistencia. Quizá por la noche tendrá un sueño. Durante el sueño, la bomba de la fábrica se abre, vaciando el exceso. Pero hay algo que nunca debe hacer. Y si lo hace, la fábrica pequeña produce más rápido. Y será tentado a vaciarla más y más, y más. Recuerda los antinefilegi, después que Amón los bautizó. Ellos escondieron todas sus armas de guerra y prometieron nunca combatir más. Me siento como adicto. Lea el verso 19. Y así vemos que cuando estos lamanitas llegaron a conocer la verdad y a creer en ella, se mantuvieron firmes y prefirieron padecer hasta la muerte antes que pecar. Y así vemos que enteraron sus armas de paz, o sea, enteraron sus armas de guerra en bien de la paz. Entierra sus armas. Un abrazo, Elder. Es un buen, un buen Elder.
All right, what'd you guys think? Everything worked until that freeze frame. Everything worked until the freeze frame oh, at yeah. the end. <laughs> you don't like 80s movies or something? Anyways. They, in the 80s. <laughs> what'd you guys think? Was this an interesting, was this a good use of camera? No. Why? Yes, absolutely. What was the camera doing? <coughs> nothing. Uh, why do you say nothing? Well, it didn't. It didn't yeah, it move. It, it, was, it, it didn't was move. Got, it, it got in between them. It got yeah. Inside right. The that was interesting, wasn't it? Was that intense? I mean, would this have been better with camera movement? I don't, th I definitely, in this, in this case, I really don't think it would have been improved by camera movement. I mean, maybe a subtle push in, maybe. But the thing is, like, what was the camera doing? Like, let's think about it like a human. What did the director do to the camera? What did the director do with that soul, exactly? Put in the perspective of age. Yes. I think it, it th yes, I think, I think you're right, absolutely. I would say, almost say it put us between them in that awkward state. But like, what else was it doing? I have an image that I think shares what I think it was doing, but I want to know what you guys think. I think it was like blocking the audience. What? Into that position, force them to go into the conversation. One second. Oh crap, I didn't have this thing right. Wow. Oh, you can't see it. God, that's too bad. It really just sucks the... Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you guys seen Clockwork Orange? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, look, I want to make a point here, which is that a... Um... <laughs> In this story, I think it was closer to this. How many of you wanted to look away? Because it felt awkward. A lot of you? Because it was so <laughs> awkward. I mean, how many of you were afraid this was going to take a very dark turn? A lot of you, right? And then the, but the director said, no, you're going to sit here and you're going to watch and you're going to stare straight at him in a really awkward place with just that ferocious eye contact and you're not going to look away. It was like putting someone in a vice grip between your arms and saying, look at it, <laughs> right? And that is not a, that is not a small choice, right? It's a loud choice. Would you guys agree? Like what I what, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that like uh, when you put a camera on a tripod it's it's a really bold choice. There's there's very few very uh meaningless things you can actually do with the camera. But when you when you lock that thing off, I mean you you guys have it on your tripod. You you pu you put this thing and you lock it off and it's like this thing's not moving anywhere. You check it by shoving it, right? And when you're what are you doing to your audience? You're doing the same thing. You're tying them up. You're saying you're going to look at this thing, which means you have a lot of responsibility when you do that. What responsibility is that? What's up? Yes, thank you. And it better be good, <laughs> right? Or it better be meaningful, or it better have an impact, right? It's not, it's, it's not a shy choice. It's not like, a, oh, we'll just lock it off, which a lot of people do by default. A lot of people lock off a shot by default. It's like, oh, I mean, it's a good composition. Locked it off. Meanwhile, your audience is sitting there going, right? So, okay, I, um, I have another clip I'd like to share. Um, but, yeah, while well, I can see it, Sheesh. it's amazing how much it saturates that screen. Okay, I need your permission to, to watch this a little bit, guys. It, it's, it's a film that has to do with slavery, and it has to do with, with camera and what it does to an audience in a story, but it's, 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 it's graphic. And, um, I just need to make sure that that's okay that I share that in front of the class so I can move on. But is everybody comfortable with me showing something graphic and that has to do with very sensitive subject material? 12 Years a Slave? No? I cannot show it. What's not? Okay. You got it. Um, all right. In that case, um, let's see here.
Have you guys heard this quote before? Do you get, does, anybody know who, does anybody know who said it? Uh, I, I thought it was Christopher Nolan, but I tried to find out who said it, and I couldn't find it. I wasn't sure if anybody else might know. What, is this, what does this mean exactly, this quote? Is it true? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would actually say it's like time travel. Mm -hmm. I mean, like quite literally, right? I mean, like how often are you getting your one side of the one side of the shot versus another side of the shot? Like at the same time, usually you do one side then the other, right? And then you cut it together, and I mean, it basically is time travel. You're capturing light from a very specific moment in time. It's like looking at the stars a little bit, right? You're only seeing that the light from the star that was emitted how many millions or billions or trillions of years ago, right? So when you are taking your soul, your, your human being on a journey with your edits, right? Is it a good idea, do you think, to keep the edit in mind? So you have like, let's say you have a lot of action, right? Is it good to keep the edit in mind? Why? It's just part of the filmmaking. I mean, but why is that a good idea? Like, do you do it? How do you do it? How do I think about the edit? Yeah, let's say you're doing something with a lot of camera movement. How do you keep the edit in mind? Well, I'm planning out what I'm covering and what part of the story each kind of setup of the camera is telling. Yeah. So when I go into an edit, I can figure out what I want to give to those different perspectives. Okay, fantastic. Very good. Does anybody else have any philosophy for how they how they create a dynamic uh, experience for their for their audience between the edit of something that might be pretty complicated, like a lot of camera moves? Cut on movement. What's that? Cut on movement. I don't know. Cut on movement. That's not a bad idea. So I'm going to show you a clip from something, and. Uh, Just let's, just let's just see how it looks and let's explore it a little bit together. And then we'll just chat about how this was, how this was done.
How many of you guys have seen Mad Max Fury Road? Is it a good movie? Yeah. It's pretty good. How was the scene? Bonk shit. It was what? Bonk shit. Bonk shit. Wow, okay. So, um, was this, how many, how many of you guys had a hard time following what was going on? Or was the action pretty clear? It was clear. Why? Center frame. What's up? Everything's center frame. Anybody else hear that? Where, did you did you know that from watching it or from researching I mean, it or just from I yourself? Heard, no, I, I saw this like three times in theaters. I loved it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty what good. Fast and the Furious tries to be. Yeah. So I mean, is this is this clear because of the edit or because of the way it was shot? The edit. Probably the edit. Both. Both. Both yes. It wasn't all storyboarded before What's up? Storyboarded and previs before. Well, I'm gonna offer a explanation. From the filmmakers themselves. Oh, whoops. All right. Let's hear, let's hear the DP describe how they shot this. Compositionally, whatever was the center point of that shot had to be in the center of frame. In the faster cutting that he's got, your eye won't have to shift on an anamorphic frame, won't have to shift to find the next subject when you've only got 1.8 seconds of time to do that. theory of not having to move your eyes and being able to fast cut and it just goes bang 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 takes you into it and that is basically the whole of the film all we would hear all the time on the comms was george saying put the crosshairs on her nose put the crosshairs on her nose you put the crosshairs on charlie's nose you didn't offset to grab any, any information in the background. Camera had to be in the centre. It's very disciplined that way. Everything is symmetrical. How many of you guys recognize that that was what they were doing when they were making it? When you were watching it? A few of you? Did that help? But that... This decision relates very closely to what a little bit what, I mean, what we've been talking about here, which is like, wow, you know, if, if you're going to take people through a crazy action sequence and you want them to understand what's happening, you can keep their perspective and everything they're supposed to be looking at so that their head doesn't need to be constantly doing this or their eyes don't constantly have to be doing this. This allows your eyes to focus on what's important in those milliseconds and it's precious and it's treating your audience with care. Is that easy to do? This was definitely not hard to do. I mean, you could hear him talking about George Miller being like, he sounded pretty kind of angry. You keep that crosshairs on Charlize's nose, <laughs> right? And that's to do with controlling the perspective of your audience for the benefit of the edit and thinking not just about the shots themselves, but thinking about how it's gonna end together and thinking about your audience experience and putting that first and foremost, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start to wrap this up. Um, but look, how do you how do you get better at, at at treating your audience and taking them on a journey? I have I have some suggestions. I my biggest ambition to to kind of help you guys with your storytelling is to not take anything you're doing with your with your camera for granted. Don't make any choice passively. Does that make sense? And it, it's, it almost doesn't matter. 
It almost doesn't matter what, I mean, there's like, look, there's, there are so few rules. There really are so few actual rules with what you can do with a camera when you take them on this journey. And so I want to implore you guys to make stuff up. Just try things, trial and error, repetition. The more you, the more you embark on a crazy idea, like what they did in Midsommar, right? It's like, well, that might work. Boy, did it, right? But they didn't open up some rule book or some cinematography book to get that idea. They had to just trust their instincts a little bit, right? And it's amazing how much meaning will start to come alive in your shots and in your storytelling when you allow yourself to, to be free of what you think might, the shackles might be, because there aren't very many shackles. Does this make sense, guys? And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Trust your instincts. Study movies, study filmmakers, right? I mean, like, it's interesting because if you take that center framed idea, people aren't even going to know that you stole it from George Miller and who he stole it from. No clue for me. I have no idea where he got it from. Maybe he made it up, <laughs> but it worked, right? I do believe that the best way to figure these things out is to watch movies and just resonate with it, figure it out, study it, see what they did. But I think the best sources is from watching the movies and then listening to the filmmakers, and that's what we've been doing. And I think there's some really cool nuggets of gold that we've uncovered a little bit together to try to figure out ways that we might improve our own storytelling processes, right? Um, I have a little, oh wait, is this class end at 12.50 or one? 12.50. Okay, I'm just gonna wrap it up then. Don't be afraid of your cameras. Have a relationship with your cameras. And it's amazing, I think, what, what beautiful things might unfold for in your films when you do that. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, <laughs> um, I, look, I look forward to getting to know the rest of you at some point, maybe around campus or whatever. But uh, it was a real pleasure. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving break. Thank you. Uh, Davey? Yeah. She did. I, I wasn't able to read it yet. Okay. But yeah. It's just that her hard drive is broken. Yeah. Um, yeah have you guys got a tech support? Uh, <laughs> but she, the problem is that she's in the desert.